Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Hope you're doing well. I tell you, I woke up this morning and I wasn't feeling well. I had um, a stomachache. In fact, it's still kind of going on right now, but I'm not going to let it stop me. I'm still going to be up um, about my day, about my life. Um, I don't know if it was something that I ate yesterday. I don't know, but been up since about four o'clock this morning but oh good morning maurice i tell you you my faithful earth i love i love me some maurice so anyway i'm excited about the day regardless of whatever little things that come up you can't let things stop you you still have to have a plan you still have to have a way up good morning joan uh you still have to have an idea that you're going north and not south you know, that you're going in a direction that is, is worth your while. Uh, sometimes we, we just get sidetracked and sidelined on stuff that doesn't matter. And we have to actually say, it does matter. It matters for me. And I have to set out for a plan. I have to set out a way forward. Uh, and as I said, I wasn't, I decided I was not going to deal with not feeling well. I said, a lot of people don't feel well. They still go to work. I've always done it, done it pretty much all of my life where I, I always had a a backup plan. In fact, I have a, a little sign I'm going to bring out next next week and start posting it every once in a while. And it says you can always have to have a plan B. And sometimes we don't. We don't have a plan B. Everybody sits on on A and we stay on A. So when A goes amok, the lights go out, you know, uh, the the uh, engine turns off, the TV doesn't work, you know, you had, you know, a storm and everything's up. So what? So what? You still have to wait, have a find a way up. Good morning, T. Hope you're doing well. Um, so anyway, here's here we go. We're going to talk about up and the different ups that we have because there's multiple ups. You can be you can be in the middle on some things and be up on other things. So we're just gonna hope hope that um no, I don't have any sinus stuff. It's nothing of that. It's only it was only my tummy was hurting. And, you know, I caught myself making, you know, some homemade uh pizza the other day. So I don't know, my daughter said it was, you know, too salty or something. Something she was talking about. And I tried to eat it again yesterday, and I didn't eat much. No, I'm not going to eat much anymore like I used to. So I don't know. My Whatever it was, my system didn't like it. So I'm back to my new up for today. But, you know, I have a few poems. And, uh, hey, Jean, missing you. Hey, baby, how are you? Hope it's just no no sign of stuff, nothing. I don't have any sign of stuff. I don't have anything wrong with my nose. Now, I may run every once in a while only because every time I put on glasses, that's an old person's thing. <laughs> I put on my glasses and my nose want to run. I know my, my nose says I want nothing on me. I'm too old for this stuff. But anyway, here's a few, here's a few poems. The first one doesn't have an author, but it, it's almost like a kid's poem, like a a rhyme of some sort. It says, here we go, up, up, up. Here we go, down, 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 e. Here we go up, and here we go down, and here we go round, and round, and roundy. So, you know, you know this was for a kid, but it's so cute. It really says that's how our life is. Some days we're up, or maybe some hours we're up. Then something, we get some bad news, we go down a little bit. Oh, Maurice, just a little gas. Could be, but I don't know. Could be. And then it says, but then our life, you know, in between is going to go round and round and round. And that's how we, that's how we are. That's how we function. We function on an up and down, you know, but I want us to function on the up, you know, as best we can, as often as we can to stay up there on top of stuff is what we need to do. So anyway, I, I went and found another poem. Now, this poem, it says, Try Again. Try, Try Again by H.T. Palmer. It says, Tis a lesson you should heed. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Then your courage should appear, for if you will preserve, you will conquer 
Never fear. Try. Try again. Once or twice, though you should, though you should fail, if you would at least prevail, try. Try again. If we strive, tis no disgrace, though we do not win the race. What should you do in that case? Try. Try again. If you find your task is hard, time will bring you your, for, your, your reward. But try. Try again. All that other folks can do. Why with patience should not you? Only keep this rule in view. You must try. Try again. So that's how we stay up. We stay up, not always that we're up, but that we're headed up. That's good. That's a good thing. And so I, I like this poem by, by Palmer, which says, it's kind of light, but it says, look, no matter what's going to come your way, because things are coming, we need to try, try again. You know, we don't, we can't sit down the first time something is challenging us. We have to actually just maybe sit down long enough to figure out how we're going to get back up. And what we're going to do with it. It says like a seesaw on a playground. Up and down. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is our lives. We're going to go up some and down some. But the point is. Is that we always need to try to head up. As long as we can. For uh, for all the reasons that we should. So anyway. I'm going to give you this acronym. It's called DLB. DLB is don't look back. And that was the original kind of, I guess it was kind of like the, the program the, that I created with Are You Stuck associated with that whole concept. And it started with the whole idea of Lot. You know, Lot's wife looked back in the Bible and when she looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. Because sometimes when we look back, we, we fall apart when we go back through what we've already been through. So that's why sometimes you just have to leave it alone. And so if you look up, and not constantly looking back, you know, you can't look in two directions. You know, I tried that one time. I can't, I can't undo my eyes like that. You know, even though one doesn't see well, I'm just saying. So anyway, we need to, to constantly looking up as far as we can towards, towards trying to reach goals that are, that have been given to us to do. So anyway, when we look at ups, and I didn't just say up, because that means it's not singular, it's plural. Meaning you're going to have some ups, more than one. And it says, ups towards a higher, towards higher places or positions at higher levels of intensity, volume, or activities. Or activities. So that is just telling you that ups doesn't stand still. Ups is looking at what's higher, what's upwards. What skyward? What is to the top? What is in the sky? What is what is above? What is aloft? What is heavenward? What is in the air? All of those are above us. Everything. Everything I mentioned means it's above where we stand. It's above where we're seated. It's even above where we can look and see. But we look up because there's something higher that can pull us up as opposed to having us stay down and not be able to to defend our position. I like that. Defend our position because if you're up, you're you're ahead of some things. You're on top of some things. You're standing on some things. So therefore you can't consider, you know, the lesser role that you've already, you know, assumed. Stay on top as long as you can and do all that you can. So the U, you know, I'm going to break it down. So the U is for uphill because we realize our lives are an uphill battle. Every day there's something going to come at us to remind us that we are only human. We only have so many hours in a day to do things, but yet and still we have 48 hours worth to do in, in, in 24. We, we pack it in. There's a lot coming at us. Even though we're in pandemic, a lot to do. You know, my schedule is so darn full. I keep trying to think, well, what, what? But that's my up. That's my up. But anyway, to have an uphill challenge, it says it's an unascending up. It's to ascend up a hill or a slope to go upward, rising, ascending, climbing. Or it says to go upward, 
toward a higher place or point or level, upwards, uphill, skyward. So constantly moving up. We move up, we move up, we move up. And it's not necessarily talking about stature. It's talking about keeping your mood up. It's talking about keeping keeping on top of things. Those are up. Um, and, and also our mood. Because I, I, I feel that that if I let things, if I worry about every little thing that may come my way, then I'm consumed with something that's pulling me down. I don't want to be pulled down. I want to be done just the opposite. I want to be up. And so therefore, I have to address it just like that. I have to address it in a way that makes sense to me. So so I, I look at being up, going uphill as it might be tedious. It, it might be a long time getting there to, to arrive. Uh, it may be tiresome. It may weary, make me weary. Maybe, maybe even make me doubt myself for taking on the journey. But that's what we do every day. We take on things that at, we, at the start of it, we may say we can't get through. That's the person like the runner or the walker or the, the, the person that decides they're going to set out and ride their bike for four miles. You know, they get to the halfway mark and say, I did that. I'm motivated to go back. Sometimes we have to challenge ourselves just to remain up, you know, and just to have some more ups that were added. Good morning, Miss Sharon. How are you, sweetie? So, so we, if we, if we're in a forward position, we're headed up. We don't, we don't want to head down. We want to head up. So anyway, the next, the next, the P of ups is pinnacle. Now. You know, everybody pretty much knows what a pinnacle is. It's the most successful point. It says it's the it's the culmination. It's the peak, the height, the summit, the top of something, um, the climax, the annex, the vertex, the zenith, the epogee. I like that word, epogee. The acme, the meridian, the ascendancy, the peak, the needle, the mountaintop, and the crest. All that has to do with the pinnacle. And I know we've had some points in our lives that would be considered pinnacles. You know, and maybe if we've finished a program that we didn't think we could finish, or we got married, or we, you know, we, we, we got a house and we're putting in all the things in it and putting it together, something to be proud of. Or, you know, our children did something really special and we're excited for them. You know, maybe they got a scholarship to, to, to college or they got accepted into a private school, whatever it is, that those are pinnacle points in our lives. Those are high points. Those are points that should be acknowledged, so points that should be, you know, embraced because they don't always come frequently. Sometimes there's a long separation of time between pinnacle one and pinnacle two or pinnacle 55 and pinnacle 56. You know, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is that we still set out on our journey to go up and consider what ups does for us. Being up really does a good thing. It does it for our heart. It does it for our head. It does it for our families, our friends. You know, have you ever met a friend and you knew that they were down and you tried your best to bring them up? uh it, it, with a conversation you know like i'm a person that sometimes in fact i have a friend right now that's going through cancer and and if i get the idea when she calls me and she'll send me just a little note with a little heart on it or something i'll run by and i keep my distance and i i'll take her some flowers or do something special because you know what I want other people to feel as good as I feel if it's possible. And sometimes, sometimes we can't always do that for other people, but we certainly need to, to be a part of the encouragement process. We want to be there to, to, in any way, assist them along the way of coming up. You know, I imagine that, that to me, um, I, I, what I love about this woman is that she's, she's gracious she doesn't uh, live in pity. She lives in delight. She's always talking about, oh, I'm cooking dinner. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. So she doesn't live in what some th people would consider, you know, a, a downer. She, she just she treats it as the opposite. 
You know, yeah, I got to go today, but I'll call you when I come back. Feeling good. She'll call me up. She'll text me or call me up. I'm feeling good today. Feeling wonderful. I'm a little tired. Or she'll tell me if she's tired. So here's a person who lives a life, what I say, a life that looks up and not looks down, that believes that her 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 power is in her belief. Her power is in how, what makes her feel good, what makes her 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 shine. You know, to me, every time I see her, I, I get something from her. She keeps me up. So if I just think she have the, and sometimes it's just that I want you to have this, to continue you being up. Because we realize that up, up may be temporary. You know, we may not always stay on our pinnacle. We may be up a minute and then something happens and it brings us down. So we want to stay up as much as we can. And then the last word it, for the S is sanguine. And I said, Sandy, where you get that word from? Well, sanguine is optimistic. We must be optimistic. It says optimistic or positive, especially in an apparently bad or sometimes a difficult situation. Sometimes we're just faced with some stuff. It's, it, it comes to us and we need to deal with it. And we don't always know how to deal with it. We don't always know. But, but if you have the sanguine approach, that means regardless of what it is, you're still going to keep an optimistic twist on it. Say, look, it ain't going to take me down. Almost talking to yourself. You know, I'm not going to even deal with that. I'm on top of this. I can do this. I, you know, and they said that those kinds of, of personal affirmations really help people, their mood changes, they bring themselves up. And then if other people are also encouraging and saying the same things, hey, what, what they got to do? They're going to stay up. So anyway, to have this sanguine approach, it talks about being optimistic, being almost bullish, you know, almost bullheaded about, hmm, and ain't going to knock me down. I'm done with this crap. You know, sometimes you have to talk to yourself. It says hopeful. You know, hopeful, buoyant, you know, positive, confident, cheerful, cheery, bright, of good cheer. All those things speak of what sanguine does to us. So sometimes when we hear bad news, we need to give ourselves some good news right away. Going to beat this on top of this. Going to do that in the morning. Going to go, going to get down on my knees and pray about how he going to bring me up. So sometimes you just need a way to look up, to become what I would call positive thinking, positive acting, positive being. All those things talk about what ups does for us. Where every time we can get an up, we need to say up. <laughs> or if we get several of them, we say ups. We just, it, it, it's, a, it's a good thing to make us excited about where our life is going. Um, and we can let we can let things and people pull us down easily. People will do that, you know. People will do it, but but we have to stand in the gap for ourselves sometimes and say, "I don't let you do that to me. I'm done with that." You know, it is what it is. And sometimes we have to be clear to other folks that, you know, you you can't be the bearer of bad news to me because I'm up. I'm up about this thing right here. I'm good. We're going to stay on it. We, we, we feel it has importance. It has, you know, justification. It has, you know, love, kindness, all those things, my joy, all those things that says I'm on top of this. And that's, that's our approach. That has to be our approach, especially when you look at what we're dealing with now. Pandemic brought a lot of people down. It brought a lot of people into feeling, um, you know, especially if there was always there was already a struggle before the pandemic came, you know, uh, it, it, and so they acknowledged the fact that the pandemic was already added to something they were already dealing with. Um, this morning, I, I tape a, a CBS uh, morning show, and and I love it. I, I love that show because it, it comes on every Sunday. It's, I mean, it's called Sunday Mornings, and uh, it, it's a really good show because it really brings about some decent stuff. Let's see. Company is wanted when we are up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Company is wanted when we're up. And the show was talking about how 
you know, a family before the pandemic was, you know, they were just barely making it. They lived paycheck to paycheck. And obviously they knew they were borderline poverty. And then once the pandemic hit, you know, they have to stand on food lines now. And there's only a, there's a family of three, but because their businesses just shut down, you know, uh, and, and, and that's what happens. And so we can't always say that we're, that we're in a position to have a plan B, but when we are, when we get when we get money that we weren't expecting, save some. Uh, when we get in a in a position where, you know, we're making a little bit more more money than what we we're making before, you know, then save what you were still being able to live off on before. Save some of that, you know. Try to get in a position that you're on top, because let's face it, we know that a rainy day is going to come. It comes to every single one of us. It's going to come. And not all of us are fortunate enough to say that we have money sitting in the bank. We don't. So, and, and when we don't, um, you know, every once in a while, like the stimulus check, you know, I, I was telling some, some folks that I know, I said, listen, don't, don't get so happy with the stimulus check because they do want you to go back out and pay that, that money out and, and, and and in some instances you may misuse it um but next year it's added to the amount of money you made for the year so it's still money they just gave it to you early and so you have to decide if, if you're going to if they give it to you again are you going to use every dollar or will you save a little bit just in case you have to give some back there's always a left to a right always you know, uh, they gave you something left and, and right for that. And then you did something with it. You took a decision left or right. You paid bills or you spent it, you know, and, and they certainly wanted you to, to uh, do your thing. But you always have to think what happens next year? What happens six months from now? And we're still in pandemic. Okay, so I'm not telling you, and, I, and this is no reprimand for anybody, it's just saying, my mom used to say, if you got a dollar, if you can save 20 cents of it, save 20 cents. Just throw it in a jar. Act like it doesn't exist. And for a lot of people who have money, that's exactly what they do. They do not live on the money that some of us may find, and my mama used to say, burn in our pockets. We had to get it up out of there. You know, where other people, they, they always kept it. They always knew where 20 cents was and 30 cents and 50 cents. And yes, I know things are expensive. Don't get me wrong. I do. I know things are expensive. But on top of the things that are expensive, we also buy some unnecessary things. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. You know, I may go in and get a coffee, but feel I need, you know, some nuts. I didn't need the nuts. But once again, you know, they put things in your view. So what you went in for originally, you got that plus something else. So then it ends up being $2.95 plus tax extra than what I should have paid. I should have just paid for that expensive coffee, which was, I don't know, four twelve. I'm just saying, that's just me. So anyway, Joan says always. If possible, have an emergency fund. If you can. If you can. You know, because things are going to come. Eventually, things will come. You know. And I'd rather have a little stash, even if I don't have it all. If I have a little something, that takes some of the burden off of me to worry, to be concerned about the rest of it. You know, I I, I do my best to, uh, to look at that. But anyway, when I go on, I'm going to ask you some questions. Hope you have a pen and paper. Hope you're looking at this. And you know what? Today is September 11th. So, you know, I already have prayed this morning for those souls who left here on September 11th, 19 years ago. And um, I sincerely believe that um, we as, as a people, you know, must continue to pray that for those that are gone, but also pray that for those that are still here, that that our fate isn't so tragic and and that we will, you know, eventually when it's time for us to go, that we will go peacefully and we will go up 
uh, to our maker, that, that was my maker anyway, I'm going to claim him, um, and not worry about it, not worry about the, the, how, how we left here, but that it was a peaceful leave. Um, or a peaceful departure, let me put it that way. And it says, Maurice Meyer says, some emergencies come back to back. Absolutely, they do. Some of them come back to back to back, you know. Um, I, I can give you a, a quick one on that. I remember when my uh, husband passed, and here I am, a real young person. I, our daughter was just uh, about, I think she might have been six, and I'm thinking, what in the world am I doing? I'm away from New York, where, which was my home, away from all my family. And I said, okay, I got to figure this out. I have to figure it out. And for some reason, my husband had things tied up in such a way, because we were military, but he had it tied up such a way that the money came and it would come monthly and not in an annuity as one dollar amount. So I was struggling paying for his funeral and he and I did what he said. So he had a funeral here and a funeral in New York City. That's crazy. If I was ever to think that over again, that's that retrospect, that looking back, I would have said, hell no. But I didn't. I did what was supposed to be done. And I remember struggling and the people in New York telling me, well, unless the final plot is paid, you know, because he bought a plot for two. And I said, why would he do that? You know, I knew he, he knew his, his uh, you know, leaving this life was soon to come, but why would he have done two plots? They said, oh, well, you know, your name is on the other plot. Well, there's no way that I'm going to pay that kind of money. I learned something. And sometimes when you learn something, you need to stay on what you learn. And so I knew I was not going up to New York again to be buried and all the money that went with his burial. And, and you know, that was, that was years ago. So can you imagine what it would be now? I couldn't afford it. Good morning, Sean. I can't afford it. So those are not my plans. But I had to play, pay for that plot in order for him to be buried in New York. So sometimes you don't even know things are coming at you, but it was one to get him, you know, buried and taken care of all of his arrangements were done here and then have the body flown to New York City along with my daughter and I flying to New York City and then going from there and, and just realizing all the things that came on me back to back to back. And even when I came back, the money still wasn't right because he didn't do any of that right. So I struggled. I know what I know what struggling is. I can I can tell you that once I was able to get on my feet, I said I would not do that again. I would not get in a situation where I don't know all that's going on as it applies to me and my child. Because at that time, you know, I had a young child. You have to think about what it is that you're doing and how you're doing it. And it took me a minute. I'm, a, I am, I'm not going to lie. It took me a minute. But probably for the first oh, year after he passed, I struggled of how to do this, that, and the other thing. And if you, so anyway, let me tell you this. Now I'm going to let you go. They, they sent a check. And, and at that time for service members who um, were passing away, you know, he passed away and it wasn't. You know the the annuity wasn't as good as it is now. I think now it may be four hundred thousand or six hundred thousand dollars. Back then it was fifty. So they sent me a check for fifty thousand dollars, and then they sent me the very next day. They sent me a um, an overnight letter to tell me stop. Do not cash the check because they misread the the agreement that my husband had signed and therefore I was required to send to return that check and they sent me a re annuity check out every uh, week and I remember the annuity check was worth for $1,445.13 that's it that was it so sometimes you don't even know your fate but you're going to figure out how your up is going to be and my up was to learn fast on how 
to take a little bit of money and stretch it a long way and pay for a house because the house wasn't paid for, pay for two cars because neither of them were paid for, and just looking at life totally differently. <laughs> So, you know, you really look at how you have to change stuff. You have to change stuff for, for yourself. You have to change stuff for your, for your family. Um, you have to change it for your way of going up. And that was my only way of realizing that I wasn't as prepared as I could have been. But then again, I was young, um, not young now. And, you know, hopefully and prayerfully in a much better position to, not get myself in a in a situation where um things are left you know undone but sometimes that's what happens so anyway here's the questions but thank you for that maurice hi sean my nephew in atlanta um here's some things it says question number one are you on your way up in your uphill <coughs> or down or are you just standing still what you doing are you up you know, did you get a new job, uh, a new, just a new way of living, um, a new recipe? Are you up? Are you up? Are you happy? Are you up? You know, or if you're doing nothing, say so. You know, that should be written down in your book. I ain't doing nothing today. I've decided that. Question number two, have you gone up high enough yet to reach your pinnacle? Or have you met some pinnacles along the way, met some real high points? If you met some high points, acknowledge them. Because sometimes we let the high points become almost mystery to us. We forget them. Don't. Don't forget your high points. Your high points actually generate the, the excitement to move to the next higher point. And so I would say keep those high points in your you know, maybe a little sidebar. You got them on the side of a sheet of a paper or something while you're writing. They just say, yeah, I made this. I've done that. I did. Those things are pinnacles. Those things are should be knowledgeable and kept not, uh, account of. And the last question, do you possess a sanguine attitude about your climb? Good morning, Irish. Do you, uh, about your climb uphill to your up word location to your up location do you possess a sanguine attitude and remember what i said sanguine sanguine was positive okay you have a positive attitude you know about where you're going and what you're doing and how you're going to get it done and so it says do you possess this attitude this good attitude about your climb up and where you're going and what your location will be you know, to me, all of those things um, just say, I'm, I'm on it. I'm going to work on it. I have something to do. I'm excited about it. And it's, it's about me. It's about me. So anyway, if you've had a sanguine moment and you're real excited about it this week, write it in the thread. I'd love to see it. But uh, that's this for, that's all I have for this week. It has been a good week. We've covered a lot of good stuff. Hope you've enjoyed them. Um, hope you had. Hope uh, hope your holiday was was enough to get you situated to wait for the next holiday. That's up, uh, which is always Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving to me has always been a time of of family, and some people are probably thinking that you know the pandemic has forced them into seeing family more. So if they're living together, but. For others like myself, you know, I don't, I have not gotten to see my family other than my daughter um, who lives in, and my family, most of my family lives in New York. Um, but one of these days, you know, when the pandemic hits and hopefully I will be able uh, financially and able um, physically to make that trip to see all of my family and we maybe have a, real, a, a small reunion um, and, and get together, just get together as a family and, and be able to say how thankful we are that we're still here. Um, and so far, those of us that have made it through this pandemic, amen. You know, um, I've known others that have gone home this week, last week. So, um, 
that that to me is is a sad thing and i don't know if any of you knew dan evans was and i was called him mr dan never called him anything ever else and he uh he worked at uh, joe moore's funeral home for years and i remember when my husband died he was a part of that and always you know said if there's anything we can do always so he passed this week um and that was that was sad you know just to know that that he fought as hard as he could but he didn't he didn't win on this side but but he won on the other side hopefully he's up dealing with all the goodness that he had upstairs dealing with his up side of the other life of a new life but i want you to take care of yourselves uh go out please cover up um wear gloves if you have to especially if you're going in some places that uh may not be as clean as they look um i always think about you know in fact that this morning i heard it i'm not big on eating out so sometimes i will go out just to be covered up and be around a, you know one or two friends and then i freak out about it so then i never order anything or i'll order something that i know they didn't touch <laughs> directly so the people that are preparing the food so you know after a while you know you, you just you, you just are sensitized by what it is that you've seen or heard and i think i heard it this morning on tv where it says that some people that are ending up with the virus they're finding out that they had gone out to eat within the last two weeks um before they actually were diagnosed and eventually hospitalized so sometimes we just have to be our own best um i guess cheerleaders you know to making sure that we make some good decisions as we're cheering ourselves on to not make a bad one you know not make a bad one but i love you i love you i love you i appreciate all those who come and I, as I said, I always say, you know, I appreciate you if you scrolled and found me. I appreciate it if you stop. I appreciate it more if you stay a minute. And then I absolutely love you, love you, love you if you're able to share it. Um, and it's not available to share until maybe, maybe 15, 20 minutes after, maybe even 10 minutes. It might be ready. But anyway, you all have a good weekend. Be safe, be safe, be safe. Love you. Bye-bye. Be up.